Hey guys, in the last video I talked about what happened from the discovery of the COVID-19 virus to the total lockdown Wuhan on the 23rd of January 2020. Please take a look at the video for what happened before the quarantine. And please subscribe to my channel for more videos about China. Your subscription will definitely speed up my updates. After the total lockdown Wuhan, within two days, all cities in Hubei province except Shenongjia has announced total lockdown. Shenongjia was not officially under quarantine in the beginning because it is a very rural area. It just mountains and forests there. It is a place famous for Yeren, which is Chinese wild man. So it's like a Chinese version of Bigfoot, or it's like a, a forest version of Yati. So you get the idea how rural that area is. Other provinces, other area in China, although some of them didn't officially announce the total lockdown, they have also taken measures to prevent the virus by self-quarantine. Starting from 10 a.m. on the 23rd of January, all trains, airplane, coach, any, and all type of transportation stop in Wuhan. You can't leave the city by driving or even walking. If you try to leave by driving, you will see the largest group of law enforcement team anyone has ever seen. This is the joint enforcement team consists of police, sanitation officers, city management officers, joint defense officers, assistant police, traffic control officers, sub-district officers, doctors, nurses, and special police officers. Really want to thank those people who stood up at the critical time. In the early stage of the epidemic prevention and control, they didn't have a proper means of protection, but they guarded the border of the epidemic area and did their best to contain the virus in Wuhan and in Hubei. This meant so much because there are 1.5 billion people in China. The whole nation's resources were poured into Hubei for over two months to fight the virus. Therefore, except for shortage in the first few days in the quarantine area, their food, medical resources, and human resources, soon, very soon, they followed. But imagine if the virus spread widely in China. I'm afraid the resource of the whole world would probably not enough to save 1.5 billion people. Many more would have died. In the very beginning, a concept that was planted in everybody's brain. As long as the information about the virus can run faster than the virus, we can definitely win this battle. So everyone was talking about the virus safety to prevent the virus. Then we were told how to prevent contractions. It's actually quite simple. Try to stay at home. Don't go anywhere with a large crowd. Try not to get together for social reasons. Wear surgical masks or NF5 masks when you get out. If you live in Hubei or your parents are in Hubei, I'm sorry, nobody in, nobody out. Completely locked down. One person from each household is allowed to go out two hours for shopping every two days. If you're from Hubei, but you left before the quarantine, you need to self-quarantine. Contact the local CDC and provide your current location and try to avoid contact with anyone. If you don't and you're still hanging around, when your accent get picked up by local people, they realize that you're not from around here, they will report you. They will call the police, the police will come, and then you will be arrested. If you're not living in the quarantine area, you can travel, but your temperature will be taken basically everywhere. Train station, bus station, airport, subway, any public transport stations. To avoid direct contact, your temperature will be taken with the contactless thermometer. At the same time, if you have been tested and you're healthy, a QR code will be given to you. This QR code has all your basic personal information, and it represents that you're healthy. When you go out, you need to have this QR code ready because it will be scanned everywhere. When you enter a subway station, a train station, airport, when you're getting on a bus, when you're walking into a shopping center, a supermarket, a library, etc. Basically, every public door or gate you walk through, someone will be there to scan your QR code. Most people in China have smartphones. They can download the QR code on their phone. Those who don't have a smartphone, generally some very old people, the QR code can be printed out on a paper, and then they can keep that paper in their wallet. I have to say this is brilliant. Not only the QR code can work like an ID or a pass in this special pandemic time, but also thanks to the technology, if you contracted the virus later, your movement can be tracked easily and extremely precisely. They can then go wherever you have been to and disinfect the area. And the people who have been on the same train, same bus, in the same elevators, same room, will be in 
formed and then they can go get tested so the virus will not be further spread to others. All confirmed cases are available online and in newspaper. You can see where they have been to at exactly what time. I'm living in Australia, the government here obviously have given up to provide us information about those confirmed patients. I mean, I don't need to know who they are. You can protect their identity, not that. But where have they been to? What did they do? This is very important information. We need to know it to protect ourselves from the virus. They don't want to do it, so the idea here is to keep distance with all Chinese. But guess what? According to our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, the country which has actually been responsible for a large amount of coronavirus has actually been the United States. In China, you can actually find every confirmed case on the internet. You can get on the internet, search for location, or you want to search flight numbers, train carriage, whatever you want to search. You'll be able to see in the past about two weeks, which is about the incubation period of COVID-19 virus, where they have been to, what time, what did they do. If you thought that you might have been there at the same time, you were probably around one of the confirmed cases you can go to get tested. It's also completely free. When you go home, the security, the local CDC or the subdivision officers will have your temperature taken. Unlike in Western countries, most of the people in China, especially in cities, living in apartment buildings. Chinese real estate developer rarely built only one apartment buildings in one project, unless it is like a massive building. They normally do at least three buildings a time, and some big projects can go up to like dozens. In most cases, they will build a wall around those buildings, and naturally, one subdivision is formed. Then they will hire a property management company, which is somewhat like those you know, owners corporation company or body corporate companies in Australia. But unlike owners corporation companies in Australia, charging a lot of money and they don't do nothing. Those property management companies must provide services, including maintenance, cleaning, gardening, and security. Sometimes even a gym, swimming pool, and the senior center. And everything I just mentioned need to be available on site in the subdivision. Those ones outside are private businesses. They don't count. So you will see a gate with security in basically every subdivision in China. Those security are the ones did so much to prevent the virus. If you live in the subdivision, you meet them every day. So you know them and they know you. If you're not, they don't know you, they will not let you in. It doesn't matter if you know someone in the subdivision or not, because all social gathering is not allowed. If your temperature is above 37.5 Celsius degrees, they won't let you in. They will contact the local CDC if you cooperate, or the police if you want it the hard way. This is a special time. Everyone is advised to stay at home. Of course, there many people don't like it. There, there will be always some people don't care about the virus, but they're risking other people's health. After watching so many zombie movies, we should know that what will happen if we let people we don't know into our door. If one suspected or the confirmed case is found in your building, your building will be under lockdown. Nobody gets in, nobody get out, not even for shopping. Epidemic preventing personnel will deliver water, fruit, both cooked and raw food to your home. Backed by government funding, the good thing is everything will be completely free. If you have been tested positive of the coronavirus, don't start to panic because 80% of the people experienced nothing more like a bad flu. However, it doesn't mean this virus is no biggie. To the rest of 20%, the virus could be deadly. Some people are virus carriers. They might feel nothing at all, but they will spread the virus to others, their children, relatives, and parents. And there are 20% of the chance their symptoms are going to be severe, and 2% of the chance someone will die. The risk is unacceptable. Those experiencing minor symptoms will be quarantined in those field hospitals, upgraded from stadium, universities, and factories. You might have seen those dancing videos before that was in those field hospitals. Since everyone was advised to stay at home, 
Deliver guys have become the superhero this time. Even in Hubei, they are still allowed to do their job as hero. That makes sense because people still want to shop. They still want food from the favorite restaurant and drinks from their favorite tea shop. You will see something that's quite on Euro. A lot of the restaurants and shops are still open for business, but with a closed door. I'll show you a clip, okay? You see this girl as an example. <laughs> Staying home is not doing nothing. Everyone was encouraging each other to fight virus. Healthy people staying at home and avoid direct contact with others is the most important part of the fight. And not doing nothing, you're actually doing the most important part of the fight. Also because we have experience with the pandemic before, and it was not long ago. The SARS was only 17 years ago. We still remember it. Even me, I personally, I experienced it, I remember everything. So basically everyone has already has the mindset. We know there's no vaccine and no super effective way to treat a patient. So we believe fighting a virus this contagious, a national scale quarantine is the right way to fight the virus. It may not be the only way, but it surely is the most effective way. I don't want to get too far on this, but when we're fighting coronavirus, what America and Europe were actually doing. They stood there and they watched. Not actually they did something, they criticized everything China was doing. Wall Street Journal says China is the real sick man of Asia. The Guardian believed China's reaction to the coronavirus outbreak violates human rights. Bloomberg likes to call everything China does as an authoritarian. Those are just some examples. This kind of news is everywhere. I guess as long as you are white, you are right. And now after everything we have done and after everything they haven't done, China has to pay America for all the losses caused by coronavirus because it is Chinese virus. I don't want to be banned, so please allow me to end this video by a speech made by US Senator John Kennedy. The brain is an amazing organ.